you're a serious Bible student, you want to study the Bible, you want to get some resources, but you've got a budget that you cannot stretch. What do you do? Uh, this is a question that some people have asked me if their budgets, their wallets are not that thick, but they really want to invest in some Bible resources. Um, I would simply just say, you don't really need to spend that much. Not really. Uh, if you really have to know the priorities, here's my suggestion. And this is just my suggestion. It's just my opinion. First things first, I would invest in an ESV study Bible. The ESV study Bible has some really, really great notes that I really, really like. Now, there are two kinds of study Bibles. There's this, the devotional study Bible, and then there's the objective kind of study Bible. The ESV is the second kind, which I prefer. Uh, there are so many devotionals out there which you can buy, and but if you want to study the scriptures, you gotta get a study Bible that does not tell you the application. It should not. It should give you context. It should give you information. It should give you background, uh, you know, notes and FYIs, so that you, as a student of the Bible, will know the context, and then you, for yourself make the application. You have to be the one to interpret how to apply the text in your life based on your situation, your, you know, it's case to case, whatever season of your life you're in. So that's the first thing, the ESV study Bible. It's actually very cheap. It's cheaper than all the other study Bibles out there. And I really also like the ESV translation itself. Number two, if you've got enough budget, I would suggest that you download an app called YouVersion. Y-O-U version. The, the YouVersion app has so many devotionals and all of that stuff, which I don't really care much about because they've got some devotionals from, you know, some really weird uh, preachers and teachers. But there's one thing that the YouVersion app has that I really, really love. It's the NET Study Bible that has 60,000 translation notes. Now that is worth buying. I, I can't remember how much, but it's not expensive, okay? And it's just an app. So it's an app on your cell phone. The NET translation is one of my favorite translations as well. So uh, if you have both, then what you get is the ESV study Bible, which gives you the more literal kind of translation of scripture from the Greek and Hebrew. Then you've got the NET, which gives you a more thought per thought dynamic kind of translation. So you get two sides, two translations from the opposite sides of the translation theory, which are very, very good. I really like both the ESV and the NET. Plus, with the comments of the ESV study Bible and the notes, plus you get the translation notes of the NET study Bible, then you're good to go. You're so good to go. Why is that important? The translation notes will tell you, for example, the Greek word of this is, for example, whatever Greek word, right? And then they'll say, there are so many possible meanings for this Greek word, but they've decided to translate it as this English, English word because of this and that context. So the ESV study Bible will give you the context of the situation and the issues based on what was written in scripture while the NET translation notes will give you the context of why the people chose this versus that word to translate it into. So those two are already very good and you won't spend too much. I think uh, in pesos, in pesos, okay, I think the ESV study Bible would be about 2,000 pesos or less, maybe like one eight or one four if you get the non-hardbound copy that's like maybe one four. And then the NET translation would probably be at around maybe 500 pesos to 700 pesos. So your total investment would only be like what? Not more than 3,000. It won't, it should not reach 3,000 pesos, okay? So that's a really, really good investment. Now, if you wanna continue, if you've got more budget, um, then I would strongly suggest that your next step would be commentaries. Uh, there are two that I really, really appreciate. The IVP, so I, I, V, P. The IVP, uh, commentary of the New Testament and then you get the IVP commentary of the Old Testament. Those commentaries are excellent. They give you even more information than what the ESV Study Bible gives you, uh, but that's like just to add. If you want one more, and I would say this is probably the last one and then the rest are luxuries, uh, the Bible Dictionary. 
which Bible dictionary, there are so many, I would simply say get the most updated one, get the one, uh, buy the one that's um, uh, more recent in terms of when it was published. All right, so uh, just to, to recap, first the ESV Study Bible, then download the app, the Version app with the NET 60,000 translation notes. Then after that, get the commentaries, the IDP commentaries for both the new and the old. And then after the, the new and the old uh, Testament commentaries, get a Bible dictionary. Bible dictionary, I really appreciate because it gives you even more insight to certain words and certain terms uh, which would coincide with how you study systematic theology as well. Uh, that would be my, my, my personal preference and advice if you're looking for uh, how to budget your money and study the Bible and invest in Bible resources. If you're studying the Bible because you're a, a, a deacon, an elder, uh, you're, you're doing Bible studies and you're teaching the Bible to others, I would recommend two more things. And these are just things that I would do. Um, you can go to Bible.org. So it's Bible.org. Just use the magnifying glass, their search engine in that website. It's a very good website. It gives you so many good uh, you know, notes, comments, uh, interactions, even devotionals, uh, which are very, very good, bible.org. And you can use them as well as references for uh, teaching your flock, your congregation, or your people. Another one I would suggest is a book. I, I've said this book so many times. I've referred to this book so many times. Nine Marks of a Healthy Church written by Mark Dever. Now this book, Nine Marks of a Healthy Church, I have personally read this book from cover to cover four times, okay? Four times cover to cover. I love it that much. It's so very helpful. Now, lastly, um, I would suggest this. If you're studying the Bible, uh, I hope you're not studying it just for the doctrines. Don't be, uh, you know, those types of Christians who know all the doctrines but uh, don't really apply them much. Uh, there's, there's this thing that I don't like when, it, when, when we study the Bible, just a, a warning. We tend to deceive ourselves by saying that we're mature when we understand certain doctrines. You know, like, I must be so immature right now, and then suddenly you study about predestination, and you study about, you know, infralapsarianism and sublapsarianism, you know, and you go, wow, I understand predestination, I must be now mature. You know, maturity is not measured by how many doctrines you know, or how many doctrines you can explain or understand but rather maturity is based on how you obey and apply the doctrines, even the basic doctrines of Christianity in your life. All right, so don't deceive yourself. Don't, don't allow uh, those thoughts to enter your mind that you know, your maturity is based on your intellect. Uh, the Bible is actually very, very clear that it is our, it's the fruits of our spiritual life that count. And of course, doctrine is important for that as well. Now, one last thing, one last thing. If you are, again, studying the Bible to teach, to preach, to explain to people, things like that, I would recommend that before you craft a sermon or a Bible study, read three different translations. Three. One on the side of your, your equivalent, uh, dy dynamic equivalents, and then one on the side of your uh, literal uh, literal translation. So you've got the ESV and NET, so you've got both sides already, that's great. So I would strongly recommend read the ESV, read the NET, and then read something in the middle, kind of like an NIV maybe, or maybe uh, a, an HCSB or a CSB translation. Or better yet, this is something I personally do, I read the Amplified, not the Message, the Amplified Bible. Uh, this is just for, for you to have a kind of perspective on how to teach it. I, I don't read the Amplified to study the Bible. Uh, I already have all the resources, the, the ones I mentioned. I read the Amplified version to just kind of see how to explain it further to the people I am um, teaching or preaching to. And that's something that I hope uh, you would benefit from as well. So if you read those three, ESV, NET, Amplified in the middle, that will just help so much in the explanation side. Uh, I hope this was helpful. I hope this was something that blessed you and encouraged you in your Bible reading and your Bible studying. God bless you guys and see you in the next vlog.